remember what we said really quickly. If we keep his, we keep commandments. his, his commandments. If we keep his commandments. And that's based on 1 John 2, 3. Yeah. Is somebody read that, 1 John 2, 3. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obedience to God's word and keeping his commandment is the proof that we love and know Christ. Yeah. When we say his commandment, we just talk about the Ten Commandments. Are we just talking about the Ten Commandments? There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's the Bible. <laughs> First John 2, 6. 1 John 2.6 6 says, He that say he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Mm -hmm. So how can you be sure that you know Christ? Walk as he walked. And how did he walk with the word? Amen. Uh, so you got to walk as he walked. And in this scripture, it's talking about live. And, and taking it back to the history of James. Um, and James, the, the uh, agnostics wanted to believe that Christ did not walk and live on this earth as a human. That's one of the things that they believed that they tried to put out there for people. And James just stood and he encouraged, he said he encouraged the children in the Lord, he called the children, mm -hmm. to, to, to believe in what you know is true. Okay. Question number two. Somebody read question number two on an old commandment and give us the answer. How is God love perfected in us? Mm -hmm. By keeping God's word, the love of God is perfected in us. Mm -hmm. How is God's love perfected in us? And Sister Valerie said, by keeping his word, um, he's perfected in us. Um, To read. And one that I love to read in comparison to this one is about the, the branches, the vine and the branches in John 15. Oh, I love that. If we had time, we should read that whole thing. The true vine. It said, how is God's love perfected in us? And maybe we should go there. Let's, let's, let's go there and let's just read um, St. John 15, and we're going to go through 11. 1 John 15, 1 through 11. How is God's love perfected in us? And actually we need to go through all the way through... All the way through um, 13. So somebody read um, St. John 15, 1 through 5. 1 John 15, 1 through 5. St. John. St. John. No, St. John. St. John 15, 1 through 5. St. John 15, 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me, ye can do nothing. Wow. Amen. 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 We got to walk as he walked. In, in the scripture here, it said, he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth what? Not fruit. He taketh away. Mm -hmm. If you're not bearing fruit, if you're not doing what, as what he said, do bearing fruit, he taketh away. But he said, in every branch that beareth fruit, what does he do? Purge. He purges it. What does that mean to you? He purges it. it. Um, <laughs> he makes it better. Mm -hmm. He purges it. I have this plant in my bathroom at home. I'm so proud of the plant. It's the only plant that I can keep. 
<laughs> so, you know, I don't, I don't have to water it for days, and it still grows. But I go in there, and every so far, I got to take the brown leaves off, and I got to shake it. It needs some more dirt. So I'm waiting for Sister Margaret to help me with that. But I, I prune it, and I purge it. And when I do that, and keep it by the um, sunlight, I notice that some more little bugs come up on the plant. <coughs> so it purges it so it can make room for some more. And that's what it's saying. And, and we were talking about how God's love is perfected in us. Somebody read 6 through 10. So would that be taken away that that hinder if you're grown? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you, know, you got to give it up. He, yeah. He'll take it away, but you got to give it up. Yeah. Some people want to keep it. Lord, Some people want to keep it. But you got to be, this is, this is free will. Yeah. You got to give it up. You yeah. got to give it up. Um, I'm trying to see the scripture that comes to my mind. Um, it'll come back to me. It went away. So, yeah, you got to give it up. In verse number three, Sister Marie, that's good. Say, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You are clean through the word. And Sister Valerie was telling us, how is God's love perfected in us? By keeping his word. By keeping his word. And that's how his love is perfected in us. Somebody read verses 6 through 11. Let me keep reading. You can. Verses 6 through 11. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gathered him them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Mm -hmm. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Mm -hmm. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. There you go. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Wow. And we're going to answer this about this joy, how <laughs> joy remain full, even though that was the answer. But the question was, um, and we just reviewed with sheets because we were out of Bible study for a while. A while. How is God's love perfected in us? And Sister Valerie told us by keeping his word. And, Sister, and his word, we would talk about, is his commandments as well. And Sister Emily just read, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. If you keep his commandments, you love and you abide in my love. Even, I, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Amen. And this is, this is how our joy is made for. Yeah. So, um, um, Brother Sister Hoffman and Brother Dietrich, don't look for your paper, the old commandment, because I still have it. If that's what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just reviewing really quickly. It helps me out. Thank you. <laughs> Question number uh, four: How was the darkness? How was how was the darkness passing away? What was the answer? Number three. Oh, okay. What is the old commandment? Let's go there. What is the old commandment? And we talked about this one. Okay, one second. So what is the old commandment? The old commandment, has it ever changed? No. no. Mm. Somebody turn to uh, Deuteronomy 6.5. <coughs> Deuteronomy 6 5. And thou, shalt, mm -hmm. and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the old commandment. The old commandment has never changed. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. 
and love. And what's the other part of that love? Read <coughs> Leviticus 19, 18. Leviticus 19, 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the old commandment is love God, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And it's in the new commandment. It, it it just renews and deepens the old commandment. It calls for us to let our light so shine through our lives to a dark world. That's got to be love. And the new commandment calls us to live according to the love of God, to live as Jesus lived. So the old commandment, what is the old commandment? To love God with all your heart and soul, to love your neighbor as yourself. And we talked about, we had an extensive discussion on are we our brother's keeper. And what was our answer? Are we our brother's keeper? Yes. So, so, Brother DJ, if I'm hungry, what should you do? Feed him. Don't give him up. Huh? <laughs> what does this dog say? Come home and eat. That's what you do. Feed me. Feed you. If, if, um, if I'm you, uh, you, you, the, my brother's keeper, and I'm a Christian, and I stumble and fall, and something happens, and I sin, what should you do? Restore such a one. If I can't get through and I just can't make it, and, and instead of talking about it, you should find yourself what? Praying. Praying. Praying for me. We are our brother's keeper. And we and we are and we want our light so shine to this dark world that the, the, the people glorify God which is in heaven. We want them to glorify God which is in heaven. We want our light to shine. We want to be an example. We was talking about in Sunday school, uh, Sister Camilla and I, and, and I wanted to uh, say this, and we were talking about when you stand on the word, how sometimes people may not accept it or take it. I was saying, well, a lot of times I don't have friends at work because I like to stand on the word, but not friends like I don't have no friends, but they know I'm going to give them what I stand by and what I live by. And so that's what I do. That's what I do. And so you got to expect that you may not, everybody may not want you in their crowd because you stand on the word of God. But that's, that's letting your light so shine. And then sometimes they're not going to want you around. But that's all right. Can you imagine Brother John, who we studying now, out of all the people, all that stuff going around. You know, they, they telling these lies and saying Jesus didn't live as a man. He didn't walk as a man. That you could use your intellect to get all these things. And John crying aloud and telling the people, children, brethren, young men, daughters, stand and believe in what you know. I'm quite sure he didn't have many friends. <laughs> but he kept speaking the word. And what the word did would prick their heart. The word would prick their heart. And, and also, and we talk about the commandment and, and the love of God and let your light so shine. And we also, we talk about that in Sunday school. The biggest, the biggest testimony is your, the way that you live and the way that you walk before people. Anyway, I went, of course, we're supposed to be zooming through this review sheet so we can get back to where we are. Okay. What was that scripture again in Leviticus? What's that? 19. 19, 18. 18. Thank you. 19, 18. Mm -hmm. 19, 18. How is darkness passing away? We're on the old commandment sheet, question number four. How is darkness passing away? What is darkness? You remember last week we had a conversation on darkness? And we said, uh, what, what is darkness as we talked about here in 1 John? Sin. And we said that no darkness was found in the Lord. There was no darkness in him. There was no sin in him. And so this question is asking us, how is darkness passing away? Because Somebody read 1 John 2.8. Mm -hmm. The true light is shining now. Mm -hmm. And 1 John 2 eight said, again, the new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. So like Sister Emily said, the true light is shining. But where is it shining? 
Through us. Somebody yeah. said it. We just talked about that. Through us. Through us. We're his hands. We're the Lord Jesus' feet. We're his mouthpiece. Matthew 5, 16. Matthew 5, 16. Is that the scripture that we use for that? Could you read that aloud? Matthew 5, 16. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So it said, so he can see your good works. So we see your good work. And remember, we talked about that. If you got the love of Christ in you, you want to do what? Good works. It's just going to happen. People shouldn't expect. People shouldn't expect Christians to do good things, to feed them, to to comfort them, to pray for them. Yeah, it's easier said than done. Yeah, it's easier said than done. <laughs> so, but it, the scripture said, your good works. Yeah. And then they're going to do what? Glorify the Father. the Father which is in heaven. So he wants us to Thank use you. our gifts and our talents and the thing, our passion and the things that we love to do. Yeah, and so as our gifts that he blessed us with, but the ultimate goal is to to draw them into Christ so they can glorify our Father which is in heaven. So they can see the way, the truth, and the life is in Him. Ooh, I tell you. And that's what the darkness is all about. And we talk about darkness and light can't and no fellowship. He can't do it. He can't do it. The days are old where the law was, you know, kept. And it said an eye for an eye. They passed away. And it's no more that, but Jesus said true love suffered all. And I put down 2 Corinthians 5.17. Can you read it for us? 2 Corinthians 5.17 is what it said. Then we see Sister Margaret's <laughs> there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he's a new creature. <laughs> Old things are passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to get to the sheet we're supposed to be on, which is about that passage from death to life. You're going to get there. So we still review. Sister Marvin, you had a comment. Yeah, my comment was when we were talking earlier about the purging, the vine, and then mm -hmm. the purging that takes place, and that's to me, that's how the darkness is passing away as wow. we grow in the Lord and as He purges us, and that's how the, the darkness begins to pass away. That's awesome. And as He purges us and we take on more of Him, mm -hmm. then we can really affect people's lives more. Because right. as He purges us and allow us to see ourselves, and we take that self inventory over and over and over mm -hmm. again, exactly. then we can do more work for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Sister M. I just had another scripture, um, John 8, 12. Mm -hmm. And that reads, um, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That is a good one. Then I have John 12, 35. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. What was the first one? John 8, 12. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. And John 12, 35. Go ahead, M. I like that one. I was on the wrong spot. Look at the next question. In this context, what we're talking about, question number five. So we walking in the light, and John talking to us, y'all. If we're walking in the light, how can one hate his brother? Right. This, this is the question on the sheet. He is in the darkness. You don't know him. Man that's showing love. What does it say? Man that's showing love. By not showing love. And what state is it? What, what is it? Light or dark? Dark. 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 <laughs> by not walking in the light, by not obeying God's word, if you walk in the light, that's the love of God. It is no way you can hate your brother. What did somebody say? Unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. 
Is that is that walking in light or dark? Dark. 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 Yes. That, yeah, that's how, that's how you, uh, can, I read, can I read a scripture, Sister Agnes? Sure. Psalms 18, 28. For God will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Say it one more time. Psalms 18, 28. For God will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Amen. The only way you can keep that light is that the light come into your life, and he will lighten the darkness. He will take that sin away, and he will submit and allow him to. And so many people, when they find Christ and they yield to him, it's, it's such a, a joy and a relief. I was looking at a, a religious show the other night, and the cab driver was in a cab, and he, I think it was Jimmy Swagger. And he was saying, just over the radio, hearing him talk about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he said, he just began to raise his hands right there in the cab and begin to weep and cry mm -hmm. and begin to repent and say, Lord, I thank you. And he said he felt so much light and so different. And from that day forth, it was a shift in his life. Yeah. He came out of darkness, he out faith. of bondage. He felt faith come by hearing. Mm -hmm. And hearing mm -hmm. by and what? Hearing by, by, word. by, word. by, by the word of God. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God. And, and that's just where we are. And this is what John, when we talk about John here, he just wanted the people to stay with what they know, no matter what was going on. And we can bring that up to the day's time. It is so much going on. Sister Trina was talking about in the Sunday school on Sunday, all the cyber things that's going on. And, and I mean, this is touching millions. Everything is going on. Everything is happening. They're setting the stage. Is the stage is being set? We heard Bishop Rich. We we passed stage one. We about the stage two now. Three or four. We better keep our house in order. We better keep our house in order. I was telling my son Jacob, driving to school. I said, "You about to be 16." I said, "And you know right from wrong. You know how to follow Christ and all that." I said, "I said, baby." It's on you. We're going to be there to guide you, but you got to keep your house in order. Because Mama and Daddy, we cannot stand before the Lord before you. And he, he said, Ma, you got such conviction in that. I said, I sure do. I wonder what happened. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's on you now. Well, it's been on you, but I want to make it real. You becoming of a man. You you begin to think of things, you know, responsible. You get ready to write down, you writing down dreams and visions. Make sure the Lord is in that. This is what you need to do now. There's so much going on. But anyway, got off topic. Question number six. What is the cause of stumbling? Hate. What is the cause of stumbling? Hate. Hate is definitely one of them. <laughs> he who loves his brother abides in light, and, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Hate. Other things, what else? Yeah, lots of mm -hmm. That's the end. Mm -hmm. the, the pride of life, because that's what we talked about all these things. That's right. Lust of the eye. Those three things. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take heed lest you fall. Mm -hmm. So, those things are the cause of stumbling. When you find yourself getting away from yeah. the fruit of the Spirit, the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. And find yourself falling into envy, strife, lasciviousness, all these things, you'll get it further from the light and move into darkness. Yeah, the scripture says uh, when a man is drawn away, he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And, you know? Mm -hmm. Something going on in you. There's something going on in that individual. So the cause of the stumbling coming down to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. That's right. It's us. That's right. It's me. It's me. Oh, oh. Can't blame nobody. You can't blame nobody. You can't blame God. And there is no excuse. Because He gave us the word. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There is no excuse. Because He gave us the word. Wow. Give us the power to cast down imagination. Wow. This is how I think that it's also self against the man of the gun. So we gotta pray for ourselves. Well, I have to pray for myself. Me too. We gotta pray for ourselves. Yeah. When it comes down to it, it's me. Yeah. Jesus, thank you. Because mm -hmm. we know Christ. Mm -hmm. It's us that step out of the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo. Okay, here we go. Back here. 
Seven. How do some people lose their sight? He hates his brother. <laughs> lose his sight. <laughs> the first, they staying on this, ain't they? <laughs> How did one lose his sight? Yes. The one that is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Mm -hmm. So, there you have it. It's blinded him. That's so pretty scary. Okay, next one. Who are the little children? We talked about this. Why did John call them little children? Who are the little children? Yeah. And why did he call us that? Mm -hmm. To remind them that, that their sins were forgiven. To remind them that that God, you know, He He we're all of His. And He forgave our sins. This is like saying little children. God's children. Children, look, he's forgiven our sins. It was him. Don't be swayed. Don't be persuaded. He wanted to remind us. So um, let's just take heed to that. And it's amazing. And John always say that. Remember when we did the history, we said some of the key words that we would see him say is talk about little children and son and daughter and exactly what he do and love. So who are the little children? It is us. You know, we talk about the maturity level. The way John is talking about it, just talking about us is 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 God's. You know, let him. Um, okay, next question. Who are the fathers? Why did John write to them? Who are the fathers? The mature. <laughs> and we talked about that. We said the the mature, who are the fathers, like the head or the one that's the teacher in that home. So it's, it's um it's sort of like well I'm gonna say it. I, we're on video, but with the ministers' wives, one thing I learned from years ago when going to the ministers' wives meeting. It things that you understand if you don't, if you marry, if your husband teach you at home. Sort of the same concept. What James is saying is those that are mature in Christ, or the head of the home, or the leader, or the teacher of what is to be taught about Christ in at home, teach it. Fathers, the mature in Christ, teach it. Give it to your family. Feed it, feed it to them like it's, it's food for birds. So that's what he was saying. And I have a scripture, First Corinthians 3, 1 and 2. What is it? First Corinthians 3, 1 and 2. I'm trying to see what I had was thinking here. So this is just a good review. I didn't realize we had been out of Bible study so long. And I brother. So it was talking about the mature in Christ. It said, And I, brother, could not speak unto you. Um, Speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I had fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear, and yet you now are you able. For ye are yet carnal, for where is there is among you envy and strife, and divisions are you are not carnal and walking. So he was talking about the mature. What John was talking about was the mature and be able to the mature in Christ to teach the uh, yeah. And it makes sense. It's just amazing how John said fathers and little children. Okay, next question. Sister, I can ask scripture that was. First Three, one, two. two. Mm -hmm. Let's go to ten. What did John tell the young men? Mm -hmm. That they have overcame the wicked one. Say that again. Because they have overcome the wicked one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have overcome the wicked one. So he was saying to the young men, um, he was saying, 
you have made that step towards Christ, accepting Christ. You're still mature. These were the ones that, you know, you're still mature, but you made that step. And some scriptures um, I have here is 2 Timothy 2.22. Righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So James was basically, seemed like he was talking to, to each segment of person. He was a smart man. John was a smart man. A smart man. And it's like he didn't leave anybody out with all that going on. And I and I got too deep in the history when we was talking about um, what was the rule of the king's name? Nero got too too deep into that and went in the attic and found an old history book and he was in there and well he was doing some stuff he was doing some stuff back then he was just he, he was beheading and killing Christians and doing all kinds of things and and it was like John just had like this insight that when he made sure he would get to each segment of people. Segment. And that's how we are today. That's what Christ wants us to be today. He wants us to be his legs and his feet. And then further on, or what's maybe we talked about it last, we talked about fellowship with him. And that's how we get our direction. We gotta stay in fellowship with Christ. We gotta stay in that word. We gotta stay right there with him in fellowship so he can give us a direction of where we need to go. And how do we need to do it? And what we need to say. And what segment of people we need to go to. Now, I might could go and talk to the, the judges and the doctors and the psychiatrists. Um, and they may listen to me. Or I may be the one that can talk to the, the drug addict, the prostitute, whatever. They, they may listen to, to me on that area. But wherever we go, we got to know it's of Christ and be there. And we got to do what Christ has called us to do. We, we got, and the only way we can do that is stay in fellowship with him. Yeah. And we talked about it last week. Once we fellowship with him, we're right there. That's when our joy remains full. We don't have time to get out of focus. That's when our joy remains full. The work is out there. It's not in here. Me, Bishop, got the pulpit covered. The work is out there. And guess what? When you stand before the Lord, he ain't going to ask you how many sermons you preach. That's right. He ain't going to ask you how many times you got the mic on Sunday. Not in the building. It ain't. He's going to ask you how many people that you talked to, to Christ about. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That you broke it down and tell him he's the Savior. That he's a rescue. That they don't have to live that way. That's the inventory. That's the goal. That's what it is. That's the goal. James did not have a pulpit. I mean, I can say James. Yeah. Right there. He had a pulpit. Yeah. He had one. Worldwide. <laughs> None of the people in the Old Testament did not have a pulpit. They didn't have a mic. They could not stand on that pew like Bishop did on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> they could stand on a rock. <laughs> they could stand on a rock. <laughs> <laughs> God is good. So here we go. Last question in the Old Commandment. How do we know if we are strong? Oh, how do we know if we are strong? Because the word of God abides in us, and that makes us strong. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. The word of God abides in us, but we only cannot hear the word. What we got to do? Be you got to be doers of it. How do we know we are strong? When, when tests of trials come and we stand on the word of God. When people come to persuade us one way or the other, you're still going down to that church and giving your money and doing this, that, and the other. Yep. Stand on the word of God. <laughs> Thank you, God. That's how we know we're strong. Sister Malvina, you can tell that John really had a passion for speaking to the children and the fathers and everyone because he pretty much repeated himself in verses 13 and 14. Yeah, and that's why our questions all the same. Really. Mm -hmm. I thought my Bible had the wrong verses. <laughs> 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 I was going to put it wrong. 
And we have a passion for addressing the fathers and letting them know where they stand. Exactly. He was anointed, gifted. And, the, and, and Sister Melvin, we talked about that because last week, you remember, we talked, and we said, and in here, it was saying he was having a good time. Mm -hmm. We just broke that. He was having a good time. He was enjoying himself telling people about Jesus Christ. And, 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 and that's it. That's what we're supposed to be. Once we get, and I, and I learned when I allow the Lord to, to, uh, to deliver me from some things I was going through, this became pastor, and I heard him <coughs> saying this on Sunday over pulpit about six or seven years ago. Once I realized what the real goal was, the talking to people about Jesus Christ, it was like, <laughs> that's it. I'm letting all this go on in my head and what have you. And that's what the real goal is. If no organization or committee never formed, but if you witness to somebody the love of Jesus Christ, you have done what you've been commanded to do. But because that we got the love of Christ in us, it's going to cause us to do that and help form an organization too. Brother Dietrich. Brother Dietrich, I think you have, have your hand up. Oh, yeah. At Romans 15, 1 through 3. Read that for us. Romans 15, 1 through 3. We then that are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak mm -hmm. and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Mm -hmm. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Mm. Mm. How do we bear the infirmities of the weak? And who are the weak? First of all, who are the weak? What's the scripture talking about? Mm. Say that again. The weak. Those that don't have the word. The the word. The understanding. Maybe not the understanding, the strength, the pain, the fall. Unprepared. The unprepared. That's a good, I like that. Yeah. If you're not in the word of God as you should be, you become a spiritual But you have to eat that word daily. Well, I think of weak, I think of babes. Oh, you got some old folks that are weak. What's the location of that scripture again? Romans what? I'm talking about season saints. You can be season of week. Romans 15, 1 to 3. I'm going to make a witness. Romans 15, 1 to 3. Preparation for the test. Mm -hmm. The weak don't make preparation for, you know, the for the devastation. Exactly. They don't make preparation for the storm. So in the time of the storm, in the time of adversity, he said for the strong to bear the infirmities of the weak. And the, the strong are the prepared. Mm -hmm. They have made preparation. You know, through Jesus Christ, exactly. through God, through His Word, exactly. we have made preparation. So therefore, the weak don't haven't made preparation. Because of whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So he said that the strong must bear the affirmance of the weak. Mm -hmm. So when they're going through, we have to be there to, to help them prepare because they haven't prepared and we are. And even if they're weak and they're the point where you told them to get out of sin, yeah. you told them to stop doing it, the and they still do we it. Still got to. But we got to bear the affirmance of the weak. 
Yeah. And how do we do that? Through the word of God, through love and compassion. That's that love that John's talking about again. We don't kick him and beat him upside the head because they don't, like Bishop was saying Sunday, because they don't look like us. Because their conviction is not like my conviction. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a different, I like what Bishop said, it's a more excellent way. That person may come in this church and be here five, six, seven years and still not be a, still not think about one particular area like you do. But you you got to carry it. They're weak. They're weak. And that's how we bear the infirmity. We bear the infirmities by constantly giving the word, the love of God. And not by carrying your Bible. Uh, no, it's an action word. It's an action word. Not by sitting there and coming to every service and meeting and sitting on a front pew and looking around. <coughs> and going, no, love, you sit down and have a conversation with them. I will go with you to your sister's house for dinner and you know they're going to be in the room <coughs> shooting crap and drinking uh, liquor. It may not be that severe. That's small of you, baby. That's small of you, baby. That's small of you, baby. That's what my clients would say. Miss you done lost it. You got to save that for the new ones that come in. I said, y'all not right. But anyway, that's where we are. Okay, the last hour is 10 minutes to, to um, 9. We have five more minutes. And then we bring Christian up. The last hour. It's our next sheet, because we were just doing a quick review. The last hour. Did everybody have that sheet? Mm -mm. Is there some back on the table? There should be some back on <laughs> the last hour. The first question is, what is, I didn't know what was the word, we just finished you. What is the word spoken of in 1 John 2.15? What is the what is the world Sin. spoken of in 1 John 2.15? Oh my goodness, this is where I used to use my school. Mm-hmm. Sin. Let me see what's going on. In the world, the lust of the flesh, in the, world. the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Yeah, we get ready to get into all of that. So, it said, what is the world in quote, in quote spoken of in First John? What is it saying in First John 15? Do not love the world or the things in the world. Anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is John talking about? The world. The things of the world. Mm -hmm. of the, world. the ways Lust of a sinner, mm -hmm. the ways of the sinner, the things that they do. What are some ways of the sinner? Party, drinking. I'm sorry. Dancing. Everything in six. Party, verse six. Party, drinking. Mm -hmm. Party, drinking. Before we get that deep, dog. Before we get that deep. The things of the world. Mm -hmm. The things we've been delivering from. Yeah, right. The things we've been delivering from. Yeah. Okay. Do it necessary. It's drinking and all of that. What's some other things? What about our thinking? Fighting, backbiting, mm -hmm. killing, lying, mm -hmm. stealing. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. She said, what's some other things? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about. <laughs> In things of the world, sometimes how we think. And then let's go to the question we talked about last week. Then. What is holiness then? Those are things in the world. What is holiness? What is holiness? Mm -hmm. Clean living. And what's some examples of clean living? Peace, love, joy. The fruit of the spirit. Gentleness. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And living as Christ walked on wow. this earth, where John was trying to give him the seeds, being temperate, the being in the abiding in the word, mm -hmm. walking in the spirit, and this is where good, good. So mm -hmm. we we know the difference: the things yeah. of the world, 
what first, what John is telling us what the world is, and we know what holiness Endure. is. Endure. So we know what the difference is. We got to stay with that. We talk. What did you say? No, I was talking to my wife. She asked me a question. But All right. So question number two: What is the lust of the flesh? What is the lust of the flesh? <laughs> I do. Well, I don't like the lust. You mess with me, Margaret. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Mm -hmm. it, it, what, is, what is the lust of the flesh? Preoccupation with ratifying the physical desires. Oh my! Oh, there it is. You deep. Push you on the desk, I don't understand. Look at her. She swallowed the dictionary. That's deep. I don't understand. Can you say that first word again? The sensual and impure desires, which. Gratifies the things in the flesh, which is not according to God's word. Very right. Very good. That was good. Somebody did their homework. That's how you do it. That's right. That's a good example. Well, hello there. What is lust of the eyes? Lust of the eyes.